Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're gonna be giving you an introduction to Sketch 3's interface, and we're gonna be showing you exactly what the tool's like. So if you've never used Sketch or you're opening Sketch for the first time, then this video is for you. It's gonna help you see where some of the tools are, maybe things that you're used to working with in other software. And then uh, and then in a few videos, we're gonna start getting into some really cool techniques. So these first few videos are going to be for people who've never used this before and people who wanna, who wanna learn more about what it's like. And then after that, we're gonna be getting into some of the unique features that Sketch has and just generally how to make awesome things with Sketch. So go ahead and download it if you haven't. Check out the free trial. I'm going to open it up. So if you've used Sketch 2 before, you'll see that with Sketch 3, you now get this nice loading screen. It's something that you uh, might have seen with some of the versions of Photoshop when they come up and they give you sort of like a, a, an initial menu. Uh, before, I think in Sketch 2, it was just sort of like, here's your workspace. Um, so this is really nice that it gives you a little window. You can uncheck this checkbox if you don't want to see this window. Uh, you can, um, you know, check out some of these, the manual support if you're new to Sketch stuff. You can start from templates here. We have a web design template, iOS design template, or an icon template. And they even have a thing to let you see what's new or sign up for a newsletter. So we can just hit OK and what it's going to do is open up your basic workspace. Now this looks like anything, uh, you know, it looks like a pretty standard OSX app and compared to Photoshop, you don't see the big toolbar or anything like that, uh, but everything is in a nice easy way to find it. In fact, uh, let's get started by just adding a basic shape by coming to the top left and we have insert. When you click here, you can see some of your tools, but let's go ahead and just add a shape, just a basic rectangle. Now, just like Photoshop, you can click and drag, you can hold shift to make it a square. Um, you can just create a square and then um, modify the size using the number values and the inspector over here on the right. So if we wanted this to be 400 by 400, there it is. Uh, so nothing really crazy there. Basically, any of the properties you're going to be working with, including shadows and, and layer styles and things like that, are going to be over here on the right in this inspector area. And then anything like layers, like you're used to having layers in groups of um, items are going to be over here on this left panel. So this is basically where your objects are going to be. This is going to be where the configuration for your objects is going to be. And this insert up top here is going to be where you're going to go to start creating things. So in this insert menu here, we have the ability to just make a vector line like you'd, you're used to with the Bezier curve tool in Illustrator. We just have a basic pencil. We have the ability to create some shapes here. We can add some image, some text. Uh, we can have multiple artboards. That way you can easily export or just have various working artboards. Uh, you can even uh, select in your slices. And you can add a symbol if we were to have symbols defined, and you could add styled text if there was text styles defined. We're gonna go over exactly what that means in further videos. Now next up here is we have group and ungroup. Uh, if we had another object here, let's just go ahead and do another rectangle. Excuse me, right here. We could select both of these by clicking and dragging, and then clicking group. Now they're within a folder, so that whenever you click one, it's going to select both of them. Now you could edit these individually by opening up this folder and then selecting one, and then you can move it here. But usually if you're gonna be clicking around in your document uh, and you click off of these and click back, it's going to select the group. Uh, so if you of course wanted these to not be in a group anymore, you could select the group and click this ungroup button. Now you could also hit Command G to put them in a group and command shift G to take them out of a group. Uh, now we have the ability to create a symbol. We're gonna go over exactly what that does. Uh, we have the ability to zoom in and out. And as you can see, because these are vector shapes, we're not seeing any pixelation or anything. Just like Photoshop, if you hold spacebar, you can click and drag the canvas around. Uh, you hold spacebar and then click with the mouse and drag. Um, the mouse wheel takes you up and down if you scroll that. Um, and Command P 
plus minus zooms in and out. Also, so does this magnifying glass like we just shown. Now you can select your shapes and you can edit them and have access to the actual points here. These are all things you should be fairly used to and you could even transform and skew your shapes and rotate them. So basically your transformation tools are all just right up top here. Now if you wanted to select something and scale it, you could scale it using these, uh, using these tools right here. Uh, or you could just scale it with, by clicking and dragging. Or of course you could change the size over here in your inspector. Now if we wanted to select these two shapes, we also have the options to make a union, subtract, intersect, or difference. Of course, uh, if you don't know what the differences between these are, a difference is going to basically carve out any area where they're overlapping. Uh, let's undo that. Uh, an intersection is basically only going to show you where they're intersecting. And uh, subtracting is going to take the layer that's on top and subtract it from the layer that's on bottom. And a union is going to add them together. Now, what's nice about this is it's non-destructive. You'll notice that they're essentially put into a group, which is really just a folder here, and you still have access to them individually where you could move them around, uh, unclick, and then they're still in a union here. Okay, so let's take these out of that and just have them be normal shapes again. You can take, click on a shape and tell it to go backwards. And all that's really doing is the same thing as clicking it and dragging it in this panel over here and moving it into a different layer, just like that. Uh, but either way, you select a layer and you can send it forwards and backwards. Now mirroring is going to mirror to your device. It only works on iOS devices. So if you're an Android user like me, right now you are out of luck. Uh, hopefully that isn't permanent, but who knows, Sketch seems pretty, pretty like Apple-centric, so you might not have that opportunity. Now under View, you can show things like Show Pixels, uh, which is something you're probably used to in Photoshop. You can see our, our content instantly becomes rasterized. Um, and here we now see these alias sort of edges. Um, and now we can turn on rulers just like you'd imagine with Photoshop. However, rulers act a little different. Um, you can't click and drag from a ruler and bring a guide in. To bring a, to bring a guide in, you actually double click on the, the ruler itself. And that's going to bring a guide in here. And then you can click and drag. Now you can also click and drag this ruler to sort of change your... Uh, your context here, if you wanted this to be like 0.0 or something, you could change this ruler's context as well. Okay, now in here we can tell it to show the grid, which is going to be a normal style grid, or show layout, which is a web style grid. Uh, here we have columns and gutters. You can come into grid settings to change those columns and gutters. So here it's a basic 960 12 column grid with a 20 pixel gutter and 60 pixel column widths might be something that you're used to, although I doubt very many sites are building with the width of 960 nowadays. And while there is more to the Sketch 3 interface, uh, that's pretty much it, except for this export button here where we can simply click this and it's basically going to export this selected area. By default, uh, Sketch 3 decides to select the borders of your content if you don't have any artboards defined. Since we don't, it's basically going to say, okay, here's the borders of your content. This must be what you want to export. Let's export it. And it brings up this menu where you have some options. Uh, you can change the format. You can change the size of it if you'd like. And you can give it a background color, trim transparent pixels, and then click export here. So that's all the stuff you'd sort of expect from an application like this. And just because this has a simple interface doesn't mean that this application's for completing only simple tasks. So, uh, Sketch 3 can handle tons and tons of complex operations of which we're going to get into, some of which are really exciting and a lot of fun to use. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. Stick around for the series. We're gonna get into some really cool stuff using Sketch 3. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.